Welcome to this Automation World video podcast sponsored by Schneider Electric. This podcast is focused on the future of HMI SCADA software, how it will change in the years ahead, and the factors most likely to affect these changes. I'm David Greenfield, Director of Content at Automation World, and joining me for this discussion is John Krajewski, Director of Product Management for HMI SCADA at Schneider Electric. So John, you've been in the industrial automation business for 16 years now. And considering your history in the business and all the changes you've seen, what do you consider to have been the biggest game changers in automation technology during your career? One of the most significant game changers over the last several years and going into the last decade has been networks and the impacts that increased bandwidth has placed on uh, the ability to connect to more devices and the ability to take that information and distribute it throughout an organization to more people. Has anything you've seen happen during your career come as a big surprise? One of the trends that came as one of the biggest surprises to us in this industry has is, is been that of situational awareness. In the industry, we had driven a lot of graphic fidelity and a lot of very expressive graphics, and then the industry changed and was started to focus more on actionable information and less on very expressive, beautiful graphics. And that's been a very significant change that we've adopted heavily here, but it did initially come as a uh, somewhat of a surprise as inside the industry, people have been driving towards very beautiful graphics, and then it switched very quickly. Now, considering all these changes in your personal experience, what advice would you give to someone entering the field now? For anyone that's entering the field now, the best advice that I think I would give to them would be to think about the bigger picture. Very often when you're doing things in process automation, the end result tends to be I'm trying to make it go. I'm trying to turn things on. I'm trying to turn things off. But ultimately, the big picture is, is should I be turning it on right now? Is it good for the business? Are we providing a better business result? And not just the mechanics and the technology of getting things done, but understanding why you're doing them. Now, conversely, what advice would you have given to yourself 10 years ago? You know, what do you wish you knew then that you know now? For many years, my focus has been on how we grow larger systems. And often those larger systems come with complications that make things maybe a little bit more difficult for smaller systems. So I think the advice I would have given myself was to stay a little bit more focused on the value that the people have with smaller systems, leveraging similar technologies. And one of the bigger automation trends recently has been the shift toward remote monitoring and online connectivity. Now, when did you first begin noticing this becoming important to end users? I started to notice the shift toward remote monitoring probably nearly 15 years ago when we started to really adopt Microsoft Terminal Services or what's now known as remote desktop services technology. At the time, the press was to be able to manage fewer applications, but then with that technology, we saw that expand out to having more and more people have access to those tools and applications. We expanded into web-based applications and now applications that run on your phones. Uh, we've been doing it for quite a long time. Now, another big trend in industry has been an increased focus on cybersecurity. Do you think industrial security concerns are justified, overblown? Are people underestimating the risks? They're absolutely justified. The types of applications that we control with our solutions are critical. They're mission critical to industry and mission critical to people's lives and comfort. And so anything that can deny that services needs to be taken seriously. And we've certainly been doing that. So let's look back on your industry experience again, John. What do you think has been your biggest accomplishment in industrial automation? Uh, one of our biggest accomplishments in the industrial automation industry is to introduce a platform that abstracts the devices, the equipment, the addresses, and the types of information that has traditionally uh, represented industrial processes and abstract them and normalize that data into things that make sense to people like pumps and motors and devices and then provide an opportunity for people to take that information and make justifiable business decisions to improve their efficiency of their operations. Now, you mentioned the need to abstract data and clarify it for users for better decision making. Can you explain what you mean by that? Classically, it was a number like it's N7 colon 18. How do, you, how do you make sense of that? Now we're going to tell you it's the pump pressure, and you'll be able to see this from anywhere, and you can, you can externalize that. And most companies are still focusing on trying to make that transition. We made that transition 10 years ago. Now, we've talked about several trends here today, but possibly the biggest trend that everyone's talking about is the Internet of Things. What role do you see the Internet of Things playing in the automation industry? 
The role that the Internet of Things will play in the larger automation industry will be to increase the volume of information. There are going to be more devices. Devices are becoming more inexpensive, inexpensive from the core device costs, inexpensive in terms of integrating them into systems, and they're going to provide more and more information. Where before, people may have had to make a business decision on what types of information they would collect. Now those costs are going to be trivial in terms of getting that information. And when you have all that information inside of those systems, you'll be able to make greater business decisions, but you'll have to be able to handle that volume of data and our strong platform will be an enabler to help them. Now, beyond the Internet of Things, how do you predict industrial automation will change in the next 10 years? I predict there's going to be a significant shift in the way people build applications in industrial automation in the next 10 years. Uh, HMI has been a driving technology inside of this space, which stands for Human Machine Interface. But it's more than about people to machines. It's going to be in the future driving interactions from systems to systems, people to systems, people to people, and how we take that information and take those capabilities to make better business decisions. Now, you mentioned changes related to HMI and SCADA specifically. But what about other industrial automation technologies? The future of industrial automation will be driven by an increased scope of the types of applications people are going to want to deal with. Today, people deal with a myriad of applications, and some of our customers have voiced back to us that they have to teach their operations staff about 16 different pieces of software on average in order for them to do their jobs. Software that ranges from the basics that we've always worked with, like HMI and SCADA software, into other things that we've constantly worked with, like MES applications or asset management applications. But now they're looking to do things like logbook applications, email, and virtual reality and 3D modeling, these are all going to need to come together to provide a very consistent solution. All right. Well, thank you, John. And thank you for joining us for this video podcast. For more information, please visit the website shown here.